In this video we will discuss the SmartLock Pro SE settings and how to control them from the software. As explained in our installation video, SmartLock Pro SE units are attached to the program via the main landing screen of the program after you connect them via the Connected Devices Configuration option in the SLP Configuration program. You do not need to add SmartLock Pro SE units by hand into this screen. Most of the SmartLog Pro SE settings are controllable via the software by clicking on the Edit option. One exception to this is setting the date and time. Those settings are handled on the tester itself. There is also an option to auto-synchronize the date and time over the internet if the SmartLog Pro SE has web access. Please note that the settings are synchronized with the corresponding connected SmartLog Pro SE in real time. It usually only takes a few seconds to update the settings after you save them in these screens. The SmartLog screen contains many settings and possible combinations, so in this video we are going to focus on some of the main fields that are used. The serial number is a permanent unique device identifier. Each SmartLog has a serial number from the factory and it automatically appears in the screen when the unit is attached to the program so this is not something that you need to add in by hand. The status, active or inactive, is controlled by the program automatically. Whenever a device is connected, it will be active and it will be inactive otherwise. There are some other options that you may select if you want to manually disable a unit. Why would you want to do that? You could have a situation where you have sent a smart log in to be calibrated, for example, and since it's no longer physically on site, you can mark it as inactive or pending until it comes back and you reconnect it to your network. Please note that you cannot force the tester to be active by changing this field to active. The status will change to active on its own when the tester is detected by the software. You may change the language displayed on the tester to any of the available options in this screen as needed. The operation mode is one of the most important settings. It determines functional and visual aspects of the SmartLog Pro SE, ESD test, access control, or time clock are the available options. ESD test mode is the default setting for the tester and how most customers use the SmartLog Pro SE. It is focused on operators performing ESD tests and reporting those values. Access control is a specialized mode that is used when you want to strictly enforce testing and restrict operators from accessing certain areas that are being controlled by multiple SmartLog Pro SE units via their relay connection to a door or turnstile, for example. When you select access control, some new fields become available. Current ESD pass is one of them. When enabled, operators are required to have a previous ESD status of pass in order for the relay to trigger and be granted access. Operators that have a fail or not tested status at the time will be denied access. When disabled, operators are required to test and pass each time in order to be granted access, similar to when using the standard ESD test mode. Prompt when expired is one of the other options. When enabled, operators with a fail or not tested status will be allowed to perform an ESD test in order to be granted access. If they pass, they will be granted access moving forward. If they fail, they will be allowed to retest. When disabled, operators will be required to perform an ESD test at a different SmartLog Pro SE and obtain a pass before being granted access on this specific tester. Yes, that means that you will not be permitting the ESD test on this tester. You have to do it on another unit. Please note that the standard ESD test mode is often used to block access to areas or doors using the relay and blocking operators that try to use unknown IDs on the tester, for example. It only allows usage by operators that are in the software. The access control mode is a more advanced option to that which offers more options. The last operation mode is time clock. 
When the time clock feature is enabled, it will allow you to punch in, punch out, as well as perform an ESD test. You can see the fields for that on the right, which appear when the option is selected. You'll be given the option selected on the screen of the SmartLog Pro SE, as shown here. The Access tab defines available access methods and login options. This is where you may specify which readers are in use on the SmartLog Pro SE. If you do not use the barcode reader, for example, because you only use proximity badges, you may disable that option. You may enable the keypad option, so if an operator loses or forgets their badge, they may type their number in on the keypad as an alternative way to log in. You are also able to select which logins are allowed. Test ID, which is the field we recommend to use for the badge number or ID number if you're typing in via the keypad, is what is normally selected. Some customers allow the use of the operator ID number as well. You may also select whether ID or badge numbers which are not defined in the program are allowed or not. When not allowed, operators trying to use an unknown ID will receive an access denied message on the screen. If you allow unknown IDs, you may select what is displayed on the screen. Badge Test ID, for example, is useful when using badges because it will show you what the reader has determined the card number to be. There is also a pretest option here that may be enabled. This allows operators to perform a test by simply touching the test button on the SmartLock Pro SE without identifying themselves first. This may give an unidentified operator access, so please be careful when using this setting. There is an associated setting in the ESD test section that controls whether or not the relay will be triggered when a pretest is performed. So you can make it so the test is performed and a result given, but the connected door or turnstile will not be opened. The Restrictions tab makes it possible to define various restrictions that limit access to a SmartLog Pro SE via department, group, or shift membership or restricting access to only certain time periods. This is a more advanced feature that you should only use once you are more familiar with the program or if you have specific company restrictions that you must enforce. If you are like most customers, you may leave these fields blank. Finally, the ESD tab defines the ESD test parameters. This is where you can adjust your range limits for pass and fail for the wrist strap and footwear testing. You may also disable the foot plate if you do not use it because you only do wrist strap testing, for example. There is a SmartLog required test field here that serves as an override testing feature that forces operators to perform the specified test. Even those operators designated as no test required in their individual operator record. If you are allowing people with unknown IDs to test, a separate field will appear that allows you to select what tests to enforce for them versus the normal operators. Please note that this will override whatever the required test is for the operators. It forces the override test option on everyone. This is not a field that's commonly used. Most customers want the specified test for each individual operator to be enforced. So just be aware of this field and don't use it unless you know what it does to avoid user and operator confusion. That is a general summary of how to control most of the options on the SmartLog Pro SE from the software. For further information on SmartLog Pro SE settings, please contact the Emit Factory.